I really enjoy using conditional formatting in Excel. I think it's one of the more fun features that you can work with because you get to do so many cool things with it. We can do things like highlight rules, show me all of the cells that exceed a certain value. We can do in-cell bar charts. We can do color scales or heat maps. We can do really cool icons to indicate status. We could even use it creatively to decide which rows to shade and which not to, or to shade rows based on some sort of selection from a menu. So there's so many creative things you can do with it, but they do have their limitations. Conditional formatting is considered a dynamic feature, but it's only dynamic up to a point. Take this example. We want every number in this data set that's greater than 1800 to be colored red. So we have a rule that says if I have a cell that's less than 1800 and I put in something like 2000, I want the cell to turn red. But if I were to go to a red cell and put something like 200, I want that red to go away. If we go to conditional formatting, manage rules, we can see that this rule is set to color any cell that's greater than 1800. And if we go to edit rule, here's where that cutoff point is declared. Now in this particular aspect of conditional formatting, I can point to a cell and use that cell as input. So if I were to jump out and point to say this cell right here, jump back in. So now if the cell value is greater than or equal to whatever is put in cell S5, I'll hit okay, hit okay. Well now if I put in 1800, every number that's greater than 1800 is red. But if I change that to something like zero, now it's every positive number, or maybe anything greater than 1900. So we do have that ability to feed a variable into conditional formatting when we're doing a highlight rule. But that ability to use input cells to feed conditional formatting is not universal. I'm gonna go up to conditional formatting and clear these rules. So what if we took these values and do something like a top or bottom n items or a top or bottom n percent? So if I wanted to show the top 20% of sales, I could come in here and I could put in 20%. And there's the top 20%. But notice I can't use this cell to point to an input cell. So the number I'm typing in here is locked in, it's static. When I hit OK, these are the values that are in the top 20%. But if I want to change that value in the report to maybe the top 30% or only the top 5%, I have to go back into conditional formatting, manage rules, edit this rule, and change it here because I can't point to a cell. So this is what I mean by it being sort of semi-dynamic. Some of these features can use input cells, but others are locked in. Wouldn't it be nice if we could give the user the ability to change that value? So maybe I want to see the top 5%, or I want to see the top 80%. And that could either be the top 80% or the bottom 80%. Or if I wanted to see the top 10 sales, or the bottom 10 sales, or express that as a percentage, the top 10% or the bottom 10%. So the ability to change either the top or bottom range selection, change it from either a fixed value to a percentage, and even change what that value is. Let's see how we can build all this dynamic ability into conditional formatting and overcome any of the limitations where conditional formatting may not be able to use user input in its decision making. So let's real quick demonstrate the way most people solve this problem. I want to find every value in this range of numbers that's greater than 1800 and color the cell. So the old way would be highlight all of the data, go to conditional formatting, highlight rules, greater than, and then put in something like 1800. And that's very simple, very easy, but it lacks the dynamic ability to be able to change that cutoff point. If you download this file from the link in the video description, I've outlined all of the steps we're going to take to create this dynamic environment. Now it may look like a lot of steps, but it's actually pretty easy to set up. And you can even use my completed file to reverse engineer anything that I've done. To create this dynamic conditional formatting solution, I'm going to use a variety of different Excel features. And these features can be used in all sorts of situations. We're going to use a combination of named ranges, if statements, statistical functions. So you're gonna see a lot of new things in here that you can use in other places. The first thing I wanna do is I want to create a named range of the data because I like to use named ranges in my formulas because they look nicer than standard cell addresses. So when I have to point to all of this information, I don't want it to say something like $B, $2 through $M, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of this data and I'm going to give it a named range of sales. So now if I ever want this information, I could just go up and choose sales and I've got the data. The next thing I want to do is I want to give the user the ability to pick whether they want to do a top range or a bottom range. And that can be either for an N number or a percentile. So we're going to use data validation to give them a drop-down list here. So we'll go up to data, data validation, 
and we'll base our validation against a list. And since this is a very small list, I'll just put the choices right in the source field, and that's going to be top, comma, bottom. Each of the entries in the list needs to be separated by a comma. And don't put spaces after the commas because it just makes your list weird. I'll hit OK. And so now the user can pick either top or bottom. And this is going to feed into the logic of the dynamic conditional formatting. Let's do the same thing for this cell where we let the user pick whether it's going to be a top or bottom end value or a top or bottom percentage. So we're going to go back up to data validation, create a list. And in this list, we'll let them pick either an end value or a percentage. Hit OK. And now I can say top n, bottom n, or it can be top percent, or bottom percent. So this will give us the four combinations. Now since I'm going to point to these two cells in my upcoming formulas, I'd rather give them names than use their native cell addresses. So for the top bottom range drop down input, I'm going to go to the name box, and I'm going to call this range. For the n percent drop down, that cell is going to be called n underscore perk for either n or percentage. And for the moment, we'll enter in some sort of dummy percentage value like 20. So this will be either 20% or top 20, bottom 20. Something that I discovered during the development of this project is when selecting between an n value and a percentage, the percentage needs to be divided by 100. Because if I choose 20%, that's 2,000%. So if the user puts in 20 and they pick n, I want it to be the top 20. But if they pick percentage, it needs to be 20% or 0.2. And I don't want the user to have to be reliant on putting in 0.2 when they're dealing with a percentage. But if they change their mind and go to n, we can't choose 0.2n as a value. So the user is going to type in just some sort of integer value here. But I'm going to do a little sideline calculation that will check to see if the user picks an n to just take the value they've entered. But if they don't pick an N, in other words, if they pick percentage, divide that value by 100. So off to the side, we'll start an if statement, and we'll ask the question, if the user's choice here in the N perk cell is equal to the letter N, then we'll take whatever they put in cell 08, which is right next to us. Otherwise, we'll take the value that they put in 08 and divide it by 100. So notice here, if the user puts in 20 and they've selected N as their category, then we're going to take 20 and use that in conditional formatting. But if they change that to a percentage, then the value being fed to conditional formatting will be 0.2 or 20%. Now, as far as conditional formatting goes, when you go up to conditional formatting and use the top bottom rules, when you choose top 10 items or bottom 10 items, that's using a certain kind of formula in the background to find those items. But if you choose top 10%, bottom 10%, that's using a wildly different formula. Well, since we can't dynamically switch between these categories, we're going to have to build those functions ourselves and then switch between them logically. So if we wanted to find the top N or bottom N, the first thing we have to do is figure out whether the user has selected top or bottom from this first dropdown. So this calculation is going to be just another if, and we want to know if this cell that we named range is equal to the word top. Now if it is, we want to find the top number of items that they selected here in this cell, like in this case the top 20. Now we're not actually going to bring back the top 20 items. We want to know what the cutoff is for those 20 items, or in this case, the 20th largest item. So this is where we're going to use a large function. So the large function says, where's your data? And that's gonna be our sales. And then what largest K value are you looking for? Like the 20th largest or the fifth largest? Well, this is where we point to this cell where the user typed in that value. Close parentheses for the large, close parentheses for the if, and 1,961 is the 20th largest value in the sales set. This is what we can feed to conditional formatting to say, go get everybody who's larger than this value. Now going back into the if statement, if they picked top, we want to execute a large, but if they did not pick top, then we want to execute a small function because we want to find the smallest n value, or in this case, the 20th smallest value. So it's still going to be look through the sales and then give me what's in 08. Close parentheses for the small, close parentheses for the if. So since I'm set to top and 20, 1961 is the 20th top value. But if I change this to bottom, negative 467 is the 20th smallest value. If I were to change this to 50, negative 424 is the 50th smallest value. And if I change this to top, 1923 is the 50th smallest value. I'll do something a little more extreme, like 500th top value or the bottom 500th value. So this formula is just detecting the range selection 
and then executing either a large or small function. That will be potentially one half of what gets sent to the conditional format. Now, if the user changes this from a top n to a top percent, now we can't do the top 500th percent, but we can do, say, the top 20 percent, which then gets converted to 0 0.2. We'll no longer execute this if that does the large small, but instead execute a different if that calculates the percentage. To calculate this percentage, we're going to use a financial function called percentile. So we'll start off with percentile, and we have the option to choose either percentile exclusive or percentile inclusive. The difference being that percentile inclusive includes the lower bound of the data, whereas percentile exclusive does not include either the upper or lower bounds of the data. Percentile exclusive is the one that conditional formatting uses. So we'll do a percentile exclusive. Now the data that we want to look through is going to be the sales data, but the K value, the K value needs to change based on whether the user is selecting the top or the bottom. Because if I type it at 20, and I feed that to percentile exclusive, it's going to take the 20%. But I actually want everything above the 80% mark. So if the range cell is equal to top, we'll take one and subtract the calculated value here. And remember this calculated value was to compensate for when we want it to be a whole number versus when we want it to be a fraction. Now if the range selection is not top, which means they chose bottom, then we'll just take the value that's here because we would want in this case the bottom 20%. I'll close parentheses for the if, close parentheses for the percentile exclusive, and here's the cutoff point. So in this case, the top 20%, 1,500 is the cutoff point for the top 20%. But if I choose bottom, then negative 467 is the cutoff for the bottom 20%. Now when you choose top or bottom, both of these values, large, small, and percentile, are recalculating. But conditional formatting is only going to be fed one of these at any given time. And this is where the cutoff comes in. The cutoff is just going to decide which of those two answers to feed to conditional formatting. So if they choose an N, we want to send them the result of the large small. If they choose percent, we want to send them the result of the percentile. So this is going to be very simple. We'll just use an if statement and just ask the question, is N perk equal to an N? If it is, then take the result of the large small calculation. If it's not, take the result of the percentile calculation. Close parentheses. And there's the value that we're going to send to conditional formatting. Let's give this cutoff calculated value a name. That way we can use the name in our formula. So I'll go up to the name box and I'll call this cutoff. The last thing to do is to write the formula that's going to take that cutoff value and send it to conditional formatting. I like to write this test in a normal cell just to see if my logic is correct. Then I just transfer it into conditional formatting. So the logic that we want conditional formatting is to say if this range selection is equal to top, then take a cell from the data and see if it's greater than or equal to the cutoff. But if it's not equal to top, take a cell in the data and see if it's less than or equal to cutoff. Close parentheses, hit enter, and you can see based on my choice, if I'm looking at the top 20%, the cutoff is 1501, negative 27 is not greater than or equal to 1501. But if I did the bottom 20%, the cutoff is $10, negative 27 is less than $10. So it's this formula that we're going to put inside of conditional formatting. Now our test formula only looked at one cell. Conditional formatting is going to look at all of the cells in the sales range. So let's select all of the sales in the sales range. We'll go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. So our rule is going to be this if statement. Now, even though this says B2, I've defined it as a relative reference. So conditional formatting will change that address when it examines each cell within that range. We'll go to format. I'll give it something like an orange fill. Hit OK. Hit OK again. We now see every cell in the bottom 20% has been shaded. If I change this to top 20%, I could even change the value to top 5% or bottom 5%. If I change this to N, now I'm looking at the bottom five values. And so here are the bottom five numbers or I could do the top five numbers. And so in here are the top five. So now we've brought complete dynamic capability into this to where the user could choose either top or bottom. They could do an end value or a percentage and they can change what that value is. So here's the top 50% or they could do just the top 50. So to recap, we use data validation to give the user two lists, one to choose their top bottom range and one to choose their n or percentile. Once they put in their n value or percent value, then if they choose top or bottom, 
we either execute a large or small function, or we calculate the top percentage or bottom percentage. Then the choice becomes which one do we actually send a conditional formatting. If they pick the letter N, we choose the result of the large or the small. If they choose percentage, we send them the result of the percentile. I've built all of this logic off to the side of the data set. Some of these fields the user shouldn't be seeing, while others they should be able to, like the drop-down list or where they put in their N% percent value. But all these calculations need to be hidden from the user. Now you could put all this stuff on a different sheet, or you could just hide these columns. So you're going to want to create some sort of user input interface to solicit that input from the user. Now in this case, it could be a matter of just moving things around to different parts of the spreadsheet, showing some pieces and hiding other pieces. But for now, I'm going to leave this like this so you can download this file and see all the formulas, all the named ranges, all the conditional formatting. Now, if you're watching this video the week it comes out, this will be our solution file. This is as far as we're going to take it. But in next week's video, we'll see how we can make this better. If that video is already out, I put a link in the upper right-hand corner, or you can see a link in the video description once I get it updated. But let's see what that new version looks like. The new version looks like this. We use form controls to solicit that input from the user. So here the user can choose either top or bottom, and this is a bit easier than a drop-down menu. They can also choose between an N value and a percentage. So they could do, like in this case, the bottom 20% or the bottom 20, the top 20 or the top 20%. We can even give the user a nice little spin button here and they can just sort of sit on the spin button and change this value. So all this is done in form controls. The underlying logic is off to the side. So that's all still here, but we don't show this part to the user. And if I was doing this in the real world, I would even put this on a different sheet and hide that sheet. So now you pick your value whether you want it to be top or bottom, and then whether it's a fixed value or a percentage. Although I'm not doing it in this file, you could even go a little crazier with this. And if it's in the top selection, it could be green cells. And if it's in the bottom selection, it could be red cells. It's all a question of your imagination. I've included this file in the video file download. So if you can't wait to see how this was done until the next video comes out, you can look at the download file and try to reverse engineer it. But next week, I'm going to go into how I created these form controls to control this. So between the named ranges, the if statements, the percentiles, the larges, the smalls, now you can maybe overcome some of the limitations of conditional formatting when it comes to creating something that's more dynamic where you can solicit input from the user. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you can think of any other creative ways to do this, put that down in the comments as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.